Hey everyone, today I just wanted to give an introduction to breadboards. It's also known as a solderless breadboard or a protoboard. These things are great because you don't have to do any soldering. You just stick your components in, stick your wires in, and you can get your prototype up and going in no time. So I really recommend these for your initial prototypes. Each row of five pins is connected together via a metal clip underneath. And on the other side, the five pins are connected to each other. Each row is connected together, but each column is independent of the other column. So these are all independent and these are all independent. They're not connected together from each other. Some breadboards have rails. So the rail is a huge clip that connects all the way down. So that blue line is one wire and everything in the red is one wire, even though it's in groups of five. The, anything along this line is connected together and anything along that's connected together. So you can see in this circuit, we're going to run the power along this line. It's going to hit this wire, jump over to one of these pins. And now everything on this blue is connected to that same connection. And then also it's going to go down to this green wire and go to this cl clip, which then means anything I connect on this clip is also going to be electrically connected together. So I have 3.3 volt pin on the flipper going into my amp meter which then connects into a variable resistor, which I'm set at 220 ohms. And then the other side of that clip goes into the red rail, which goes down to the red rail. So let's go ahead and plug a wire into our ground. And then the other wire into the output from the resistor. And then we'll connect the positive wire to the anode of our LED, which could be in any of these five pins. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And then we'll go ahead and on the other side, we'll connect the ground wire to one of those five. So for this LED, we're at 2.83 milliamps for this particular LED, 2.83. Remember 20 is the most you're supposed to pull from a pin. And we're at 220 ohms. So let's go ahead and increase the resistance to 1.2K and we'll plug in the wire and it's still fairly bright, but now instead of that, we're down to 0.7 milliamps. And as we increase the resistance, you can see the light dims and the current consumption also lowers. So we see we're at 2.84 milliamps. So let's go ahead and switch the wires over to this blue LED and see what that ends up using. So that uses 2.95, 2.96 milliamps um, at the same 220 ohms. Great, so let's switch over to this tiny red LED and see how that works. So we're just switching over to that. And now we jump way up to 6.6 .6 milliamps. And again, 20 is the limit that you're allowed to use. So on a 220 ohm, it looks like this is good for 6.6. .6. Let's go ahead and bump it down to 120 ohms just to see. So now we're at 11.44, which is half of the current you're allowed to draw. And less current means longer battery life. So I'd probably recommend 220 if possible. So this LED is sideways. So one is in row 22 and one is in row 23. So we'll go ahead and move our ground wire over to row 23, and then we'll move our power wire over to row 22. Remember LEDs do have a polarity, so it does matter which one goes to which one, depending on how you put in the LED. So this LED has all kinds of little blinky effects and you can see the current jumps all over the place as well. So it does its effects. Okay. So let's go ahead and try that second LED down there. Um, this one is, uh, they look the same, but this one has a slow fade effect instead. And as it's slowly fading, you can see the currents are also changing for the different colors. Switching to the blinding white light. You can see we're at five milliamps. Oh wait, um, that's at 120. At 220 ohms, we're using about three milliamps of power. So instead of our big decade box, we can get a resistor. So this resistors are 220. You can see they're stamped on the bottom. Um, there's also a way you can read the, the color bands to decode it. This is an example of a 2K resistor instead, um, which would look more like 
you know, that brightness. So it just kind of depends on what you want um, and how much current you're willing to, to consume. So I highly recommend breadboards. Um, so on the circuit, we can go ahead and just connect the red wire to one, one side. Now, again, these don't have rails, so it's just those five pins. And then we'll connect our ground to the other side. Maybe, yeah, here's good. And then we're going to connect our LED. And we'll take the anode and the cathode, make sure we know which side's on which. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and connect a wire between our positive to there and our negative on there. And now we have the light working. Now let's go ahead and grab that resistor, the 220. And so we'll connect that instead of on our red wire, we'll use the 220 resistor, which will temporarily put us at, I guess we're other ones that set at 2000. So we'll be at 2,240. Um, but that's because we have this set. So let's go ahead and pull those power wires out of our breadboard. And then on our flipper, we'll disconnect the wires and we'll connect our power to the 3.3, which goes into our 220 ohm and then into our LED. And then our ground goes into the ground wire. And so now we have a little prototype circuit with a, a light that's powered by the flipper. I hope you found this discussion on breadboards useful and please put any comments or questions you have below.